Hey, welcome back. One advantage to painting my tiles is that I can use the other side for more tiles. Now, if I'm bolting out the door for a convention and I'm grabbing sewer tiles, what am I most likely also going to need? City street tiles. If I paint those on the opposite side, then I only have to carry one set of tiles. I mean, let's face it, you can't have a sewer without a city. So I'm going to paint them on the reverse side, but I'm going to make sure that the same style is on the opposite side. So if there's a bend in the sewer, there's going to be a bend in the street. That way I can identify which tile is which, no matter what side is up. To start, I'm going to need to build a new template. Since my sidewalks are only going to be one inch instead of the sewer's two inch to give me a wider road, I'll need to cut new corner pieces. So I measure the wide curve at five inches from the corner and the short curve, one inches from the corner. I place a few marks and then connect the dots. Now just cut them out and I've got my templates. Then I base the tile in brown. When I made the sewer tiles, I forgot to show you how I adjusted the template for the fact that the wood panel is 1 8 inch shorter on each side. I measured 1 inch from the side of the wood panel and then I simply lined the template up to those marks. For the straight sidewalks, I just measured 1 inch from the border of the wood. With a 50-50 mix of deep gray and golden brown, I'm going to base coat the areas of the sidewalk. With a one-to-one -one mixture of coral reef and brown, I start laying in the road stones. I'm imagining them as sort of a red brick stone. The opposite side of the tile has blues and greens. This side of the tile is gonna have reds and tans. Color choices are important. Gray is boring. While laying out the red stones, I added in a sewer grate painted in a deep gray. To highlight the red stones, I'm going to use a one-to-one -one mixture of golden brown and coral reef. For the highlight, I just use a squiggle, literally just squiggling it in there. It gives the stone a bit of texture. To add some rust to the sewer grate, I'm going to use four parts orange one part deep gray, then I'm going to stipple it onto the surface. To paint the holes in the grating, I'm going to cut some painter's tape in 1 8 inch thin strips and use that to mask off areas. Then I'll go in with some black I'll make sure the brush isn't too wet because I don't want it to seep under the painter's tape. Just stipple it on, make sure I don't take it all the way to the edge of the grate. Peel off the tape and you've got your sewer grate lines. And now on to the brownstones. We're going to use a one-to-one -one ratio mix of golden brown and gray. And we're going to lay in the stones just the same way I laid in the stones on the street. To highlight the brown stones using the same squiggle technique, we're going to use a mixture of three to one, bright yellow to golden brown. Did you used to squiggle as a kid? I used to squiggle all the time. I miss it. Going back to our brownstone base coat of golden brown and deep gray, I'm going to use that mixture to outline the sidewalks. This will help break up those straight lines and make it look a little bit more bumpy. Now it's time to do the wash, and this step is completely optional. I just like to do it. 
using one part brown paint, one part PVA glue, and 10 parts of water, we create a soupy brown mess that we're going to use to just tint the brownstone. I also applied it to the sides of the street, hoping it would darken it, but the streets are already so dark that it really didn't matter. It didn't show up at all. By tinting the outside of each zone, it focuses attention more towards the center of the zone, and it gives a softer feeling to the separations between one zone and another. Once they've completely dried, it's time to give them a coating of gloss Mod Podge. Gloss creates a stronger finish than the matte Mod Podge does. So this will help protect it. It'll also help bring out and saturate those colors before we put another matte coating on. If we put a matte coating on top of a matte paint, it's gonna get very dull very quick. And of course, once that dries, we'll follow it up with a coating of matte Mod Podge. Here are two of my tiles side by side. The one on the left has no coating whatsoever. The one on the right received a coating of gloss Mod Podge and matte Mod Podge. Look at how much richer the colors are. With the tiles finished, now I can travel from under the street to over the street with just a tile flip. For my next set of dungeon tiles, I'm going to carry on the city theme. I'm gonna do interiors and rooftops. It's amazing how many times my characters have gotten involved in a rooftop chase. It never ended well. Thanks for watching, and if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button. Also, join us on the Tabletop Crafters Guild on Facebook. I'd love to see what you're making.